begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. I greet you, my brothers and sisters, tonight with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When I was a young man in the springtime of my life, I became a school teacher at the age of about 18. And now in the winter of my life, I'm now 75, I've become a fisherman, a big fisherman. I'm fishing, fishing for students. Fishing for those who have a thirst in their hearts for knowledge. Knowledge that comes from Allah, not from UWI. <laughs> I'm fishing for those who will devote their lives to the pursuit of knowledge. My name is not important. When I am gone from this world, all you do is make dua for me. My name is not important. The knowledge is important. The battle must go on. One come and one goes. And so in the winter of my life, I'm searching for students. <laughs> who will tomorrow become scholars of Islam. A good teacher wants a student who will rise higher than him. And so I, learn, I look for and I long for serious students, men with backbone who will stand up for the truth regardless of the price they have to pay. I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam was passing by and some of his companions were sitting and talking amongst themselves and he asked, what are you talking about? The Hadith is in Sahih Muslim and they said, we are talking about the signs of the last day. Alamatu Sa'a. We have an Egyptian with us here tonight. His mother tongue is Arabic. Alamatu Sa'a. The signs of the hour. And then he said, the last hour will not come until, and he mentioned, 10. These are known as the ten major signs. In addition to these, there are many, many, many more. They are number one, and they are not given in the chronological order in which they will occur. Number one is uh, the return of the son of Mary. Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Number two is that before he returns, there is someone who will try to impersonate him and declare that he is the Messiah al Masih, but he would not be. He would be the false Messiah. He is Dajjal. Number three, Gog and Magog. Number four, Dukhan smoke so much you can't see the sunlight number five the battle up a beast or creature of the land the earth number six that the sun would rise from the west number seven eight and nine three earthquakes three 
usuf plural of khas is sinking of the earth the earth sinks and swallows what it swallows one in the east one in the west and the third one in arabia and number 10 that a fire will come out of yemen and drive people to their place of hasha of judgment of assembly these are known as the 10 major signs some of these are mentioned in the quran for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what is surah to surah to al-a'raf Anytime you are reciting the Quran for the first time, you always say, And then you recite from the Quran. For the rest of the lecture, you don't have to do it. And your Lord has announced, has declared, but Allah is now going to raise against them against them those who will inflict upon them until the last day the worst possible punishment so from the time of the revelation of the Quran until the end of time, end, the end, end of the world, there are forces in the world which have been released by Allah and which are inflicting terrible punishment. What are they? Who are they who can live that long? <laughs> they are, of course, Al-Masih dajjal and Gog and Magog. That's right. So now we know that Gog and Magog are specially created by Allah to punish, to test and to punish. And that Akhiru Zaman or the last age is the age of the great Imtihan. Imtihan means examination we live in the age of the great examination and this is an examination which if we fail we go into the hellfire so we must seek to pass the exam in order to pass the exam you must know the subject of Gog and Magog and you must know the subject of Dajjal and this is why tonight we address you on an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. And the best place to start is with the Jews because they know about Gog and Magog. The Arabs were puzzled here is someone who was born in our midst and we've known him all his life and he's always been so truthful so honest so trustworthy that we gave him the name al amin and now at the age of 40 he declares that he is a prophet and that there is only one God and he is the prophet of that one God. How can we tell whether or not this is a true claim? They decided to send a delegation to the city which is to the north of Mecca the city of Yathrib, now it's called Medina. So a delegation went to that city to meet with the rabbis because the heart of the Jewish world had come there. In French they say, la creme de la creme, the best. 
of the ulama who in that city what were you doing there in Arabia hmm? they knew that someone was coming to that city and that's why they were there so when the delegation went to Yathrib now known as Medina the rabbis said ask him these three questions which only a prophet can answer and if he can answer them correctly then he is indeed a prophet of the one God if not it's false ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land ask him about the young men who fled to a cave and ask him about the Ruh the Ruh is of course the spirit but the Ruh is also Jibra'il alayhi salam and the Ruh is also Allah's Ruh because Allah says after he created the human being وَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ after I had fashioned him وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ and I have breathed into him of my Ruh فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ so prostrate yourself before him be talking to the angels so Allah has a Ruh so this was the third question and it was a tricky question uh, I have dealt with these three questions in my book entitled Surat Al-Kaf in the Modern Age today we will look at only one of the questions ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land and because we are dealing with geography of the Quran we have the photographs to show you inshallah the answer to the question came down with Ibrahim alayhi salam and it is located in Surah al kaf of the Quran Surah al kaf or the Surah of the Cave is the most important surah in the Quran for explaining Akhirul Zaman or the last age how would we know when we're living in the last age oh there's plenty of evidence Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam came back from the Isra and Miraj you remember from my last lecture Allah had shown him لَقَدْ رَأَى مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى Allah showed him the greatest of his ayat and so he came back to say about Akhirul Zaman that women would be dressed and yet naked is it already in the world? Are we already living in Akhirul Zaman or the last stage? He said that women will dress like men. Go to the bank and you'll see in jackets and trousers and sometimes with a tie. <laughs> it's happening already. We are in Akhirul Zaman. And there is a mountain of evidence he's given to us by which we can recognize that we are indeed living in Akhirul Zaman or the last age so Allah sent down in Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran 
information and knowledge and guidance pertaining to Akhirul Zaman. The whole Quran is important. But when it comes to Akhirul Zaman, this is the most important surah of the Quran. Surah al And of course, you know that we have to recite it every day of Jummah. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, don't worry. You must recite it every day of Jum'ah. And if you do that, what will you get? Don't worry, Imam Shiraz, I'm not going to ask you. If you recite it on the day of Jum'ah, what will you get? You'll get no. No. From the Samawad to the Ark. And that no will come and stay with you until the next Jum'ah. And if you have no, you can see there are many in the world today, both in the parliament and out of the parliament, <laughs> who have eyes and yet can't see. But if you have no in your heart, you'll be able to see what otherwise cannot be seen. So it is in this surah that we find the answer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins his answer by saying, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ And they question thee, O Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, about the great traveler. And he gives to the great traveler the title, ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ This is not a name. ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ is not a name. ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ is a title. Someone who has two, two karn, karnain, two karns. Karn can mean a horn, so two horns. But karn can also mean a generation, an epoch, an age, someone who impacts upon history twice, twice. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ قُلْ سَأَتْلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْهُ ذِكْرًا Allah says, I'm going to tell you something about him. And then he describes Zul Karnayn as someone who has faith in Allah. And of course, you know, that the truth came down to the world long before the Quran. So people in the world had faith long before Nabi Muhammad came. Not only did he have faith in Allah, but Allah established him on earth with power. So power rests on the foundations of faith. When power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? Allah gave him the capacity to pursue whatever goal he chose to pursue. So he traveled in the direction of the setting of the sun, meaning he's going west. West. You're going to see it soon, inshallah. And when he traveled west, he came upon a body of water which was dark, murky. Aynun Hamia. And there, at that water's edge, he came across a people who were resident there. And then Allah said to him, O Zulkarne, Imma an tu azziba wa imma an tahtakhiza fihi musna. How are you going to use power with the people? Are you going to punish? Or are you going to treat them nicely and reward them? When power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? I think this lecture should be delivered in Parliament, don't you think so? Huh? 
Zulkarnain replied and said, Whosoever is an oppressor who is committing acts of zulum, of injustice, of oppression, I will punish him. Meaning, power will be used to punish the oppressor. To teach him a lesson. But those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct, I will treat them nicely and reward them. But he also says something more about the ones who have conduct which is wicked, who are oppressors, unjust in their conduct. He says, when I am finished with them, they will return to you and you will also punish them. In other words, when power rests on the foundations of faith, there is a harmony between this world beneath and that world above.